Many people wonder how often you should change your hermit crab's water bowls. Generally speaking, it's healthiest for your hermit crabs if you change the water every day. That gives them access to fresh, clean water every day, and it avoids any problems like chemicals building up in the water. But this got me wondering, how long can you wait between water changes before the water becomes too dangerous for your hermit crabs? In order to answer this question, I wrote and conducted an experiment testing for ammonia in my hermit crab's fresh and salt water pools. Now we're looking for ammonia because ammonia builds up in water when dirt gets into the water, so hermit crab poop or substrate or food bits. Anytime the hermit crabs would interact with the water, ammonia could begin to build up from the bacteria. We're looking for ammonia because ammonia is dangerous for hermit crabs. It's also dangerous for fish. Any creature that has gills, when they breathe ammonia in, it burns. And actually, in high enough concentrations, ammonia hurts humans as well. So it's really not good for any animal. In order to test for ammonia, I bought API's ammonia test kit. This is a drop kit. It comes with two droppers inside of two different kinds of liquid and a little tube. It's really easy to use. Literally takes five minutes. And it's more accurate than the test strips that you dip. Um, so I'm going to use this throughout the experiment. Now, I actually conducted this experiment once before, so I have an idea of what we're going to see. My hypothesis is that as the days progress, the ammonia amount will increase, and that around day three, 72 hours after the last water change, the, water, the ammonia level in the water will become too high, it will become unacceptable and too dangerous for the hermit crabs. This is how the experiment's going to work. First, I mixed new batches of fresh water and salt water and I'm going to test both of those batches before putting them into the tank to see what the ammonia levels are to begin with. Then after 24 hours in the tank, I'll test the water. After 48 hours, I'll test the water. And after 72 hours, I'll test the water. And we'll be able to compare the ammonia levels over the, those days. The water testing process is the same for both the fresh and the salt water using this um, API ammonia testing kit with the drops. You get whatever kind of water you're going to use. This is the, the salt water, actually. And then you put eight drops of bottle one and eight drops of bottle two and wait five minutes. And then you compare the color to the appropriate card. The first test I did with the ammonia drops is on the fresh water before ever being put in the hermit crab tank. So this is water that just came from my sink, was dechlorinated, and was tested. You can see that it's a light yellow color, which reads at zero parts per millimeter which pretty much means there's no ammonia or barely any ammonia in this water. So we're starting from clean, fresh water that has no ammonia. In between each water test, since there's only one tube, one vial, I'm rinsing it with water from my sink and letting it air dry. So here's the results after five minutes of waiting. So you can see that this is like a clear kind of yellow. So it matches mostly the top one. It's not quite green enough to get to the second one. So it's somewhere between zero parts per milliliter and 0.25. So very low amount of ammonia in the salt water. All right, so it's the first night of my experiment. Here are my two bowls cleaned out. This is my salt water bowl and this is my fresh water bowl. The salt water bowl, bowl is 48 ounces, a little bit more actually. And this is about 24 ounces, it holds about um, of water. And I'm going, I just cleaned them so they're nice and clean and sterile. And I'm going to put them in the tank, fill them up. And it's about 9 p.m. Friday night. So I'm going to test the water Saturday night, it's tomorrow, after 24 hours. And Sunday night, after 48 hours. And Monday night, after 72 hours. And we'll see what comes of it. Alright, so I just filled up both pools. I think this is more like 20 ounces, not 24 because um, it's closer to a water bottle and a quarter versus a water bottle and a half. So that's about 20 ounces. This one's a little bit more than 48 ounces. And both of them have stuff in them so the hermit crabs can climb out and don't drown. So that stuff is introducing bacteria right away right now. And plus my interaction with them. And as soon as the crabs start to interact with them, they'll be introducing bacteria. And my hermit crab, Marceline, has tried to escape while I'm doing all of this. Hi, baby. So they're clean and full to the brim now, and over the next three days I won't be adding any more water. I will be spraying the tank, as I normally do, but I won't be adding any more water directly to the pools. And we'll see what the ammonia levels are like uh, over the next three days. 
All right, it is 24 hours later since I changed the water. It's 9 p.m. on Saturday. And you can see the bowl has started to get dirt in it. It's really gross looking. Wish I could change it. But I'm gonna test the fresh water and the salt water. All right, so I waited five minutes for the fresh water test. And it looks like it's still in the yellow. Maybe a little bit green, but it's definitely not here yet. So it's definitely between zero ppm and 0.25 ppm, which is what it was yesterday. So this is after 24 hours in the tank with some dirt in the water. It's like here. It's a little bit hard to tell. It's certainly not a terribly dark green. So I think waiting 24 hours, if you were to change your water every 24 hours, you'd be definitely safe ammonia-wise for your hermit crabs. All right, and here's the salt water after five minutes of sitting. And this is pretty clearly yellow. This isn't green at all. So after 24 hours, both the salt and fresh water still have safe levels of ammonia. So if you were changing your water every day, which is really the healthiest, then you'll avoid your hermit crabs coming into contact with really any ammonia at all, which will be safest for them. So we'll see what happens in another 24 hours, 48 hours after the water was first put in. Okay, it's been 48 hours since the last water change. You can see the water has gotten dirtier and they've dumped more poop in there. And the salt water over here has evaporated down quite a bit, um, but it's still deep enough and they can reach in everything. So I'm gonna do a test and see where we're at with the ammonia. Here are the results after 48 hours for the fresh water. So it actually isn't that terrible. It's higher than yesterday, definitely. This looks like it's more in between 0.25 and 0.5, but it's definitely not green enough to be one part per milliliter. So it's somewhere around 0.25 and 0.5. So definitely more than yesterday, but not huge amounts. Again, ammonia is not great to have in your tank. You can change the water every day, do. But this is what your ammonia levels would be for the fresh water about after two days. All right, and here are the results of the salt water after 24 hours. So it looks pretty similar to what the fresh water is. This looks like it's about between 0.25 and 0.5. It's definitely not at 0.1 yet, so it's definitely somewhere up here. So that's actually exactly the same as we saw with the fresh water, even though the saltwater pool is more than twice the size of the freshwater pool, which is interesting. So that's after 48 hours. All right, it's been 72 hours since the last water change. So that's the fresh water. See, they dumped a shell in there, quite a lot of dirt. And the salt water, pretty much looking the same. I think they put more dirt in there as well. And we're gonna test it and see where the ammonia's at. Here are the results after 72 hours for the fresh water. And you can see that the green is between 0.5 and 0.1 ppm. So this is too high. We don't want the ammonia to be too high. It's not, again, it's not good to have any ammonia in there. So I'm actually surprised it's this low. I was expecting it to be more between one and two after three days, but um, it's only seems, it only looks like it's between 0.5 and one. I don't think it's up to the two level yet. It's not that dark. So that's after 72 hours for the fresh water. And here's the, the uh, salt water results for the ammonia. And this one seems darker. This one seems to be more Definitely at one. I think it's definitely dark enough to be at one ppm. So I think this one's more between one and two, whereas the fresh water is between five and one. Now that's interesting because the saltwater pool is much bigger than the freshwater pool. It's more than twice the size. So, but yet it surpassed the freshwater in ammonia. So uh, I don't know what that means, but those are the results after 72 hours. So you see from our results in this uh, ammonia test that you really shouldn't go more than three days without changing your hermit crab's water. Again, the best thing to do is change it every day if you can. I would suggest regularly at least change it every other day. That way you know they're not being exposed to too high levels of ammonia. And definitely don't go more than 72 hours without changing their water because that's when the water starts to get really dirty and bad with ammonia. If this was a fish tank and there were ammonia levels, you could have fish dying from those levels of ammonia 
or getting ammonia burn and not having other problems and causing a lot of stress. Similar things could happen to our hermit crabs because of their gills and the ammonia burning their gills. So again, changing the water frequently is important. Don't go more than three days. Every other day is good. Now, on top of all this, I've done some calculations to see how much dechlorinator you need, how much salt you need, and how much money you're going to spend per year on your hermit crab's water alone. The first calculation I did was to see how much dechlorinator you need to maintain both of your pools for a year. Now, I'm making two assumptions about your water pools. Firstly, you are changing your water every day, and second, that your pools are half a gallon each. If your pools are half a gallon each and you're changing your water every day, you'll be mixing a gallon of fresh and salt water every other day. So you'll be going through quite a lot of dechlorinator. So how much dechlorinator do you need for the year? 0.5 gallons a day, so 0.5 times 365 days, will get you to be making about 183 gallons per year of fresh water and salt water. So each one will have 183 gallons. The API stress code dechlorinator, which I use, dechlorinates one gallon with 0.5 milliliters, which is very highly concentrated and very nice. So if you have 183 gallons of fresh water, you're going to need 92 milliliters of API stress code approximately. If you have 183 gallons of salt water, you'll need 92 milliliters of API stress code approximately. So 92 plus 92 is 184 milliliters per year. So API stress code, that's eight ounces, is 236 milliliters, is $8. So 236 milliliters is more than the 184 that you need for the year. So for the year, to dechlorinate both your fresh and salt water, you're only going to be spending $8. And that's the PetSmart price. So that's pretty good. And for your fresh water, that's all you're going to need. Besides needing to know dechlorinator amount, we also need to know how much salt you need for the salt water pool. So again, we're assuming that you're changing your water every day and that you're using half gallon pools. So you have a half gallon of salt water every day. So how much instant ocean do you need for the year? So a half a cup of instant ocean makes one gallon of salt water. If you're using a half gallon a day, you'll be using a quarter cup of instant ocean per day. Making 183 gallons of salt water per year, as we figured out before. 183 gallons equals 183 half cups, which is about 92 cups per year. So instant ocean comes in different size amounts. The biggest one is 160 gallons worth. It's like a tub of instant ocean. It's a huge tub of salt. So 160 gallons worth of instant ocean is 80 cups of salt, and it costs $53 at PetSmart. But that's not quite enough. We need about 92 cups per year, and that only is 80 cups. So to make the rest of the year, we need another 25 gallons worth of instant ocean. 25 gallons is 12.5 cups, and that's $18. So 160 gallons worth plus 25 gallons worth, it's 185 gallons worth of instant ocean. That's 92.5 cups. That's uh, just about what we need for the year. $53 plus $18, $71 per year on salt. Now, if you add that to the amount you need for the dechlorinator, which was $8, per year you're spending about $80. That's if you're changing your water every day and if your water pools are half a gallon each. So there you have it. Those are the results of the ammonia test I did on my hermit crab's water. Now, this is the second time I've carried out this test, but it's only the first time I've done it with the salt water. So it's still in the hypothesis stage. In order to really get down a con concrete facts about this, I'm going to have to conduct this experiment more. It'll also be useful if other people are able to conduct this experiment. You saw how I did it. It's very easy. The ammonia drops are cheap too. So if you can conduct this experiment, please do and post the results either in the comments or make your own YouTube video about it and link it here. That way we can really start to get more knowledge about hermit crabs and their water and what they need in their habitats to survive and to thrive. My name is Caroline. Thank you for joining us here at Yadokara Nation and good luck with your hermit crabs.